What's up guys, welcome back to another video on the channel, and today's video is going to be an absolutely huge one. So this was like a just giant news bomb that was dropped just a few minutes ago, and this is that we have huge news about Call of Duty 2020, about uh, this year's Call of Duty game, about Modern Warfare 4, and also about Black Ops 5, dude. So we got so much information in this video, so make sure you guys stay tuned and watch the whole entire thing, because there's so much information here that you guys definitely don't want to miss out on. So, first off, we have information, this is all coming from Kotaku, about Black Ops 5 actually coming out in 2020 instead of 2021. So, I'm going to explain in just a second what that really means and why that is actually, you know, like, meaningful at all. So, basically, we're going to be getting Black Ops 5. It's going to be officially, like, another Black Ops game coming out in 2020. So, basically, since Call of Duty began, we've always had a development cycle. So, we've had two different studios to start out with. We had Infinity Ward and Treyarch, and they always took turns creating games. So, uh, remember back to, like, Call of Duty 4. Call of Duty 4 came out in 2007, and then the year after it was World at War, which was a Treyarch game, and then after that we had Modern Warfare 2 which was Infinity War, then we had Treyarch, Infinity War to Treyarch, you know, and so on. And they just went back and forth, so that way they could have two years to create a game, but they could still release a game every single year. Well, eventually, Sledgehammer came into the mix with Modern Warfare 3, and then in 2014 was the first year where we finally got a uh, different little switch up in the dev cycle, so it now turned to a three-year dev cycle, so Treyarch, Infinity War, and Sledgehammer, they all had three years to make a Call of Duty game instead of just two, and so it gave them, you know, a lot of extra time to just make sure that their game was just fully, like, as good as it could be and just, like, fully fleshed out. But uh, it meant that, like, a Black Ops game, you wouldn't see a Black Ops game for three years. So we got uh, Black Ops 2 in 2012, and then the three-year dev cycle happened after that. So in 2015 is when we got Black Ops 3, and then in 2018 is when we got Black Ops 4. So that is what has been happening for the past while now. So we all know that, you know, Treyarch came up with Black Ops 4 and it came out in 2018. And then this year's Call of Duty game, Call of Duty 2019, is going to be Modern Warfare 4, developed by Infinity Ward. And then I've even made videos talking about uh, Call of Duty 2020 by Sledgehammer Games. And that that one is going to be like a Vietnam era game. Well, Black Ops 5 is going to be actually taking the spot of Sledgehammer's game. So Treyarch is actually moving up a year. So Sledgehammer Games will not be releasing a game in 2020. It's actually going to be Treyarch. So earlier this week, Activision informed all their development studios that uh, Raven and Sledgehammer Games will no longer be creating their own game, but instead will be assisting Treyarch on creating a new Black Ops game in 2020. So for Call of Duty 2020, it was originally going to be a Sledgehammer game along with Raven. So Raven was going to be taking on a leadership role with Sledgehammer to make a game that's going to be set in the Cold War, which is pretty cool. And it was also apparently going to involve Vietnam as well. And this lines up with all the rumors and leaks and stuff we've gotten so far. I made videos about that. But now, Sledgehammer and Raven, instead of creating their own game, a new Cold War game, they're going to be assisting Treyarch in creating a new Black Ops game. So it's going to be basically the same thing. So basically what they said is that uh, Sledgehammer and Raven are going to be creating the campaign for Black Ops 5. And it's going to be the same campaign they've been making for their Call of Duty game coming out in 2020. But it's going to be just for you know, like in the Black Ops universe and for Black Ops 5. So Sledgehammer and Raven are going to be supporting Treyarch with Black Ops 5. And Black Ops 5's campaign will be set during the Cold War. And so that's really cool and really interesting that uh, we're going to be going back to like Black Ops 1 roots. But basically, this is kind of bad news because now Treyarch is only going to have two years or more like 18 months to be able to create Black Ops 5. So the good news is that they aren't going to have to really create the campaign. That's going to be something that Sledgehammer and Raven are going to be doing because apparently the reason why Sledgehammer and Raven aren't going to be doing their own game in 2020 is because they were originally going to be doing that and then uh, Activision decided they weren't going to, that they're going to assist Treyarch with a new game basically because there's huge like fights between Sledgehammer and Raven about like creative differences and stuff about like where the next game should go and apparently it was just a giant mess on uh, Call of Duty 2020. So Activision kind of just scrapped it and was like, you know what? If you guys can't get along, then you guys aren't going to be making a game at all. Plus, Sledgehammer has been having a huge, huge troubles in recent like you know years. So um, in 2018, beginning of 2018 of last year, 
the studio heads of Sledgehammer, Michael Collandry and Glenn Schofield, had actually left Sledgehammer Games. And apparently they had been promoted into Activision, but then they would basically leave Activision really soon after. So it's basically, it was clear that they basically got fired from the franchise. And Michael Collandry even went and created his own studio, and he apparently recruited a lot of people, dozens of people, from Sledgehammer Games. So Sledgehammer Games has been apparently hemorrhaging employees over the past few months. And it's kind of reminding me a little bit of what happened to Infinity Ward and Respawn Entertainment, how uh, Vince Zampella actually left, you know, Infinity Ward and went and founded Respawn and basically stole all the Infinity Ward devs over to his, like, new company. So that sounds what it's kind of like happening here with Sledgehammer Games. So Sledgehammer Games is apparently kind of like working on a skeleton crew, and a lot of people that worked there for, say, Advanced Warfare and World War II are now actually leaving and aren't going to be there. So that's why they also brought on Raven, but then apparently Raven and Sledgehammer still aren't getting along and their game isn't really turning out that uh, like the way Activision thinks it should. So now, instead of creating their own game, they're going to be assisting Treyarch with Black Ops 5. But going back to it, this is bad news kind of in general that uh, Black Ops 5 is going to be coming out next year ahead of uh, Sledgehammer's game. So we're getting a full less year on this dev cycle. And so that means that there's going to be a lot of things going to have to be cut and the game is probably going to turn out to be a mess unless by some miracle that Treyarch, Sledgehammer, and Raven can all somehow work together like perfectly and just make this game amazing. So here's a few things of basically what we can come to expect from this game since we have a full year less for this game. So it's, since it's going to be a rushed dev cycle, uh, basically expect that there's going to be a lot of bugs and glitches. This is something that people talked about with Black Ops 4, is that Black Ops 4 was kind of a rush cycle, how they basically had to can the game and only had to create it from scratch in about like a year and a half or so. So basically the same thing that's going to happen with Black Ops 5. And so we're going to have lots of bugs and glitches and stuff. So basically expect like the same launch from Black Ops 4 about how like if you played zombies, your game would always crash and blue screen and stuff. That stuff's going to be happening because they're not going to have as much time to QA test and, you know, and to fix all these things before launch. And they'll also expect probably less content. So we're probably not going to get as many like multiplayer maps as we have gotten in the past or previous Call of Duty games. And uh, it's probably the same thing for like zombies. We're probably not going to get four zombies maps for zombies at launch like we do with Black Ops 4. It's probably going to be going back to maybe like one or two or something like that. Like I doubt we're going to be getting four new zombies maps. And I would totally expect a lot of content to be actually pushed out to DLC. So similar to what kind of happened with Black Ops 4, how before the launch, Treyarch said that, oh yeah, Factions are going to be coming to zombies at launch and then at launch Treyarch's like, oh, no, sorry We didn't have enough time So we're gonna be pushing it back and we still don't have factions in Black Ops 4 zombies So expect kind of that same thing We're gonna be getting a lot of content that was uh, originally gonna be like made in the base game It's now gonna be pushed to DLC and you're actually gonna to have to spend money on it, too So next up is that the game will be cross-gen So this is a good thing in some ways because since the game is coming out in 2020 That's when the the next Xbox the Xbox 2 or the Xbox Anaconda and the PlayStation 5 are coming coming out so Black Ops 5 will be on the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC, Xbox 2, and PlayStation 5. So that's kind of a good thing but I'll get into why that could be bad in a little bit but basically also we're not going to have a lot of innovation with this game so don't expect huge differences in terms of like graphics, the engine, lighting, and design. So since Treyarch has a whole year less to like actually design this game it's probably going to be pretty similar to Black Ops 4. I can't imagine that they're going to be able to overhaul the engine a lot for this next game, especially since they're you know going to be really rushed, and uh, they you know have a whole year less. So there's probably going to be about the exact same engine we had as Black Ops 4. So in turn, that kind of means we're going to be getting the same or maybe even worse graphics because that was a huge controversy about Black Ops 4 is how Black Ops 4 basically looks worse than Black Ops 3. And it's because they had to stretch the engine and everything so much to get Blackout to work. So lighting and design and stuff, there's going to be a huge, huge uh, just like cuts here. And uh, I mean, don't expect like there's going to be a, a, it's going to be like the best looking game because they're probably not going to have enough time to optimize it as much. And there's probably not going to be enough time to overhaul the engine and make new like new like changes to the graphics and stuff. So it's probably going to look like Black Ops 4, maybe a slight bit better, or hey, it might even be worse because hey, that happened with Black Ops 4 and Black Ops 3. And next up is that they're also going to have less time to optimize the game for next generation. So basically don't expect the game to look super incredible on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox 2 and stuff. So an example for this would be Call of Duty Ghost. Call of Duty Ghost had a two-year dev cycle, uh, just like how uh, Black Ops 5 is going to have a two-year dev cycle. But uh, with uh, Call of Duty Ghosts, a lot of people that kind of attributed that game's problems to the fact that uh, Infinity Ward had to create the game for the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, PC, 
Wii U, Xbox One, and PS4. So they had tons of platforms that they had to create the game for and optimize it for and get it running for and support it and, and you know put out updates and stuff for all those platforms. So Trek is going to be doing the same thing. They're going to have at least five platforms to actually create the game for and optimize for and you know combine with the, a shorter lifespan and stuff too. We're probably not going to, you know, it, it's going to inevitably mean like it's going to be about resource allocation. Then. You know, like they're going to have to take resources away from other areas in order to actually make the game to be able to put it on these new platforms. But also what that means is that uh, they're going to have less time to optimize it for these new, you know, consoles and stuff. So basically I'll, all I would really imagine from these new consoles and what like the, the next gen version of Black Ops 5 is going to be, it's probably a bit higher frame rates higher resolution and maybe a little bit better texture quality there's probably not going to be huge like differences huge generational differences in this game um just because that's usually how games like cross-gen games work but also because they're not going to have enough time to really like fully explore this new hardware and stuff so next up let's talk about what is actually going to be happening to black ops 4 so this is a huge huge thing and this really means that uh, Black Ops 4 is going to suffer. So Treyarch and Activision have said that Black Ops 4 is going to be the like most supported Call of Duty game ever, and that Treyarch is going to be supporting it for more than just the, you know the initial year, and that Treyarch is going to be constantly putting out new updates and DLC and content and stuff, even after Modern Warfare 4 comes out. And uh, speaking of Modern Warfare 4, I want to add a quick little thing here. Apparently, Activision is going to be testing out maybe a new like free-to-play model with Modern Warfare 4, a new like free-to-play options and stuff. So that's pretty cool. I'll probably talk about that in a separate Modern Warfare 4 video. But now that Black Ops 4 um, is you know out and stuff, Treyarch is is you know right now they've been working on you know creating new content for Black Ops 4, and that's apparently not been going well. Uh, Treyarch even said that they're having a hard time kind of adapting from like the traditional DLC model where they have you know, four DLC map packs instead uh, breaking up and broken up into seasons now. So apparently they've been having a hard time adapting to that. And then now they have to get started right now on Black Ops 5. So they kind of have to just ditch Black Ops 4 at this point and they have to just go all in for Black Ops 5 because they only have like 18 months to create a full new game. And uh, that honestly means that Black Ops 4 is going to suffer because for Black Ops 4, we still have another two uh, Zombies maps, another two DLCs. We still have at least three more operations. We still have to talk about Zombies Chronicles 2, which I personally think that Zombies Chronicles 2 is going to get pushed back into Black Ops 5 and that's not going to be included in Black Ops 4 at all. But um, we're probably also not going to be getting a lot of content and stuff for Black Ops 4. So basically ex expect at this point that Shurik is kind of going to be abandoning Black Ops 4 a little bit. And a lot of their focus is going to be on this next game on Black Ops 5. So uh, we also have talked that we're going to be getting another two Chaos maps, you know, next year in the next like season of Black Ops 4 content. But... Honestly, for Treyarch to support Black Ops 4 still, to create all this DLC for Black Ops 4, so two more Aether maps, to create Zombies Chronicles 2, and to do a full another season of Chaos Zombies maps, and like new content and new operations and stuff for Black Ops 4, while creating Black Ops 5 with basically like half the development time, it's probably not going to happen. So I think that Black Ops 4 is basically screwed and is kind of done at this point, that Treyarch basically has to focus all their attention on Black Ops 5, so... I don't know, this is just huge, dude. But uh, last thing about this Kotaku article is that they say that they're going to be reporting in the next few weeks about what uh, has actually happened with the development of Black Ops 4 because the Black Ops 4 had a huge, like, kind of, like, bad development thing. And so they're going to be going over that and talking about that in the next few weeks. I'll have videos going up about that. But I don't know, dude. This is kind of bad news. So basically what this all means is that Modern Warfare 4 is coming out this year. Modern Warfare 4 should be a good game. But then uh, Black Ops 5 is going to be the year after in 2020, and it's probably going to turn out to be a mess because this is kind of a terrible thing for them to push it up a full year. And they're just, I don't think they're going to have time. So let me know all you guys' thoughts on all this stuff in the comments down below. This is absolutely insane. I don't I don't know how to feel about this. I'll probably come out with like another video uh, more detailed about my thoughts and, and stuff about this. But let me know your guys' thoughts on this in the comments down below. I read every single comment, so make sure you guys do comment. And also subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so that way you guys are staying in with the news and up to date on everything. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.